All right, hello, I'm Lou Goodman. Uh, today we're going to talk about and demonstrate uh, some of the capabilities of a uh, higher endurance, um, triple tempered, differentially hardened uh, blade, the Goodman Combat Knife. So what are some of those properties uh, that we talked about and we demonstrated before? So this, this can what can be accomplished uh, when you put all this into, uh, um, into play with a knife. The, uh, this knife was bent past 90 degrees and then let in a vise and let uh, uh, naturally return and then taken out of the vise. As you can see, there is no cutting edge deformation whatsoever in the bend area, no stress cracks. Uh, so as we demonstrated earlier, the knife can be used to pry and, and, it, and when you really need it to. Primarily, this is a cutting tool first. So you always, like I stressed before, you always want to protect the cutting edge. So when you're, if you are going to pry, as you see this will allow you to do, you just got to always worry about protecting the cutting edge. So today we're going to demonstrate some of the cutting capabilities of this knife. So I'm going to start out with some uh, four laid uh, hemp rope. It's a little over half an inch with all four of those strands put together. And we're going to uh, do some cuts on this. Then we're going to cut some quarter inch leather and we're going to cut some cardboard and we're gonna cut some uh, uh, quarter inch rubber and then we're gonna cut some heavy duty plastic. And then we'll get on to uh, uh, chopping a two before and completely in half and uh, we'll see how this knife holds up. So far our edge is doing really well. So I'm just gonna jump right in. So I wanna hold this down when I perform these cutting chores. I'm gonna hold this knife the same way I would do this if I was at camp, um, uh, performing cutting chores at camp. Uh, you know, anything I choose to cut with this, I'm gonna hold the knife properly. So some of the design features, you know, full guard, I'll let my index finger get up against that. I'm gonna put my knife on the back. Uh, that's why we radiused, micro radius, the rounded edges on the spine. Uh, so it's not gonna bite in and cut my thumb up. So I'm just gonna jump right in. You gotta really hold this together when you're doing these cutting, uh, cutting tasks to test your knives. Press down on that firmly and get one good cut. There's, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 or so. I'll keep a better count. There's 20. Still going. Thirty or so. Forty. And we'll stop there at 50. Still cut really clean. So I got a nice pile of uh, media there. And most of the time, as in with my custom forge knives, you know it can cut on up to 100, 150, a couple hundred cuts. We'll move on. To me, that's the mark of a really good knife. If it starts dragging at 15 or 20 cuts, I need to rethink what I'm doing. So as you can see, that performed really well. Let's do some quarter inch leather. Ten. Call that twenty. Notice I am wearing Eye Pro, but I'm not wearing gloves. If you're precise with your cuts and control the blade, you really don't need to wear gloves for these. Ten more. Get 
Okay, I'm trying to keep my cuts uniform, cutting in remotely the same place of the knife. In between all these, I'm just gonna check it. We'll look at the cutting edge, obviously. As in before, you know, we jammed it through still in the car doors, no deformation, we pried, we broke glass. I don't expect to see any here. So I'm gonna check it on my fingernail. I'm getting nothing, I'm gonna check it on the bite. Still biting real well, it means it's really sharp. I'm not gonna shave my arm hair, makes a lot of sense. Will it bite the hair? Yes, it will. So the knife is still really sharp. So I'm gonna keep on going. A lot of times too, if you're gonna, if you're gonna purchase a knife from a maker or from a company, you know, you wanna ask, and you're gonna spend your heart on money, you wanna ask the company or the person selling the knife, how do they test their knives? Uh, I learned this from my good friend Ed Fowler and my mentor. If th somebody can't tell you and if they don't test their knives, then they're not gonna be high endurance knives probably. Um, I like, I, if I'm gonna you know, spend my hard earned money on a knife, I wanna know what the knife's capabilities are. So if, if someone out there is not willing to, to share that with you and perform those tests, and my, this is my opinion only, you know, you, you, and you, you're looking for a high endurance knife, you need to rethink, uh, you know, rethink what's going on there. Let's do some cardboard. I'm just gonna do a down and away cut, shave some of that off. Notice the knife is shaving right through it. It's not getting any drag, it's not tearing it. It's cutting in there pretty easily. I would expect to see chunks of that coming off and a lot of frayed edges if the, uh, the knife was getting really dull. Notice that shaves up pretty good. Just drawing the knife through there. A lot of people use their knives to cut cardboard all day long. Some people say, well, why don't you just buy a, a box cutter? Well, if your business is cutting cardboard, a box cutter may be what you need. If your business is military or law enforcement or you're an outdoorsman and you're out in the woods, I'd rather just carry one knife and uh, rely on that one knife to do all my cutting chores instead of carry three or four different knives. So that's the point of the design of this. So you see it makes pretty good work of that. Cut that whole piece, no problem. Let's do some uh, uh, quarter inch thick rubber material, see how that works. It's 20 or so cuts. I'm gonna cut that a little each way. A little over 30. and I'm using a two before here to back up the blade so you know it's getting a little bit of, you would think it might start dulling in there but it's really not it's not taking a lot of force I'm using a proper cut stroke here I still haven't changed my grip at all I'm getting no heat spots on my thumb anywhere the knife staying in my hand really well that's somewhere around 50 that's good the knife staying in my hand really well for all these cutting tasks because of the handle design. So, as we discussed earlier, all these different uh, uh, palm swells left and right, uh, the flaring on the end, the wider uh, butt back here, the undercutting, everything being rounded and smoothed over, that's allowing the, the, the knife to stay in my hand a lot better than just if I put two blocks of G10 on each side and called it good or um, and we didn't put all that effort into the handle. And my thumb, you know, has no pressure on it, no red marks whatsoever, because the back is rounded and the ricasso is rounded also. So let's move on to something heavier. So this is basically, you know, your standard uh, two and a half gallon bucket, five, five gallon bucket type lid, um, super hard plastic. Get that braced up there, and we'll just start shaving some of that off. Just little pieces of that. Get that going there.
This is super thick, so you're looking at uh, some really thick material here, which usually dulls a lot of knives. I'm just trying to shave this rim off. Just keep going around there. This type of cut on this hard plastic. I'm um, having to use the, uh, uh, the like the belly portion of the knife a lot more because I'm losing a little bit of control out toward the end, but I can still control it pretty good. So we basically cut the whole ring off that. Let's chop some of that up in finer pieces. Use a different portion of the knife, see what we can. So I'm going to grip up on the knife, maybe like you would skin, see if I can get some pressure on it that way. Use the tip, just pops right through there. Would I normally cut plastic with this procedure here, the way I'm holding the knife? Probably not. I'm just doing this to demonstrate the knife will cut when you want it to cut with different portions of the knife. So I was choking up on it like that. That's normally how I would skin a game animal. So I can make a big knife, a small knife. All right. Let's see what else we have here. I think we went through most of the uh, cutting chores. So to wrap that up, we cut uh, four laid half inch hemp rope. We cut quarter inch leather. We cut uh, quarter inch rubber. We cut uh, packaging cardboard and we cut heavy duty plastic. So like I said, most of the time I'm just going to go ahead and check the blade, lightly checking it against the, my finger. Nothing there. See if it still bites into my finger. It's catching my finger pretty good all up through there. Still sharp. And let's check and see if it's going to grab some of the hair. Still grabbing the hair pretty good. And actually we'll shave a... Good size little handful off there, so. A lot of capabilities in this knife. Um, to wrap that up, you know, everything from the, uh, um, the handle, how it's designed, and the roundness of the Ricasso and the spine area gives you a really good uh, uh, stable cutting platform to cut pretty much anything you want to cut. All right, continuing on with some of the uh, capabilities of the high endurance knife. A high endurance, differentially hardened knife needs to be able to chop. So today we're going to go ahead and uh, chop this two before and half. So here we go. that hold a little better. Let's try this. I want to jump off there. toe against it to keep him jumping around. There we go.
getting close. Real close. All right. Took quite a few blows, but you got to stay at it. Let's check the cutting edge. No fracturing of the cutting edge. Let me run my fingernail on it. Smooth there. Still bites into my fingernail. Let's check and see if it bites into the hair. Still bites the hair. Still shaves hair off. Not too bad. So you can see some of the uh, attributes of a high endurance, uh, differentially hardened blade. As you can see in, uh, in a lot of the stuff we did here today, you know, we made multiple cuts, some up over 50 cuts of all the different media, and we wrapped it up with uh, chopping the two before and a half. So edge retain, retention is very good. Uh, no, uh, no harm to the cutting edge at all, and it still shaves hair off your arm. Okay, we're following up today with some of the uh, uh, capabilities of the high endurance differentially hardened blade that's been properly tempered. So we're gonna go ahead and conduct a nine degree bend test. Uh, as you can see, you don't wanna do this at home unless you have the proper attire, you know, safety glasses, heavy duty leather gloves. Uh, we have chalked this up in a vise um, <clears throat> with some hardwood here and uh, everything's been set up properly. So we're gonna use the breaker bar, go right over the top and we are ready. Starting. 90 on the pipe right there. 90. Letting off. And we're good. All right. Everything worked out great. We got full 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and check the cutting edge. Super nice. Check that on my fingertip. No edge deflection whatsoever. Manly, that is super nice. Not even a mark uh, on the uh, nano weapons coating. And this, that edge is over 60 Rockwell. This is Not what? Not cracked. Yes, that's correct, Bill. No cracks whatsoever, no stress risers in the middle of the knife, up even toward the spine. So as we talked about before, this is what can happen when you apply uh, high-end uh, machining and use the properties that we talked about in the high-performance blade, high-endurance blade. Uh, differential hardening, uh, you know, for, for a knife, for a high-endurance uh, knife that needs to be used uh, when your life depends on it, this is what you want to see. There you go. Great job, Lou. All right. And great job to my engineers. Yep. Thanks, Bill. Have a good one. Yep. All right, I'm Lou Goodman, and I just want to say thanks uh, for uh, uh, checking out all of our testing we've been doing on the uh, Goodman Special Operations Combat Knife. Uh, please stop by and check us out at abenmo.com and on Instagram at face and Facebook at abenmo. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.